Hello, traders. Gary Wagner here just after 10 o'clock in Honolulu, 4 o'clock in New York on Tuesday, the 29th day of July 2014. And this is uh, the daily report for gold and silver. Although silver is unchanged, we will look at that in a second. We do have gold continuing under moderate pressure today, holding on by the skin of its teeth. We'll see by the end of the show if it maintains above 1300 an ounce. Currently trading at 1299 to 1300 and change. Low on the day 1295, the high 131310. Silver, as you can see by this very, very small body candle, currently trading up one tick or one cent on the day. Current print on the screen 2058. That is with a high of 2090 and a low of 2038. More on silver towards the end of the show. As we move into this trading week, we have a number of different pieces of data, data points, fundamental data that will be released. Of course, FOMC meeting began today. We'll get some sort of a sense uh, for the minutes upon its conclusion tomorrow. Jobs report on Friday. Economic data also coming out tomorrow. Market in gold has been supportive in that any kind of drawdown has been short, to say the least, and shallow, to say the least. Now, as we look at this market, as I said at the beginning of the show, it is looking to see if it can hold on to this century mark, 1300 per ounce. You can see that it's currently trading right at that point. The interesting thing as I look at the market today is that we do have gold prices really coming off of their highs. When we looked at it in terms of overseas trading last night, let's go ahead and kind of blow this up a little bit. But as we looked at the market as it traded overnight last night, was trading higher, and you can see this high right here at the top, 1311.58, that's our 38% retracement. Here is our low down here, and so we're trading closer to the low than we are to the high, but what's interesting is as the market opened up in New York, it quickly ate up any kind of premium that we saw in the market and began to trend lower. Let's go ahead and compress this once again. So the real question is, is can we hold on to this 1300? Will the market form a base from this point and then begin moving higher? So in a nutshell, really what we're looking at in terms of our current models is as follows. I do believe that the rally that we saw beginning in June, culminating at the first part of July, $100 rally, obviously some sort of an impulse wave, whether we name it wave one or wave three. What is important is from there, I believe, if we call this a one, this would be a wave two down. On this corrective wave, it could, it could unfold as some sort of an A, B, C type wave count. And if that's the case, we have absolutely completed, and this of course is short term, a sub count, our A, our B, and the question is, is have we completed our C? Now we can call this a flat. We do have this wave, wave C, absolutely lower than wave A. We then got that tremendous tremendous rise in the market that of course being on friday when we saw the market really accelerate engulfing bullish but yesterday on monday's trading activity and that's this red candle here we absolutely did not get any kind of confirmation of this two-day pattern we absolutely do have support in this market this is roughly at the 1291 area but if we look at the activity over the last two trading days, we have certainly seen this market begin to drift lower. Again, it's holding on very, very strongly, but right at $1,300 per ounce. We have geopolitical scenarios in the market that have certainly not de-escalated, and if anything, continue to escalate whether we look at the crisis in the Israel and the Gaza, whether we look at what's going on in Russia and the Ukraine, as more sanctions today were imposed not only by the United States, but also by the European allies. And so the real question is, is will we see this market have one final dip down 
to form a low. And the, and the low that I'm looking at, let's go ahead and put in one more Fib retracement. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and added that. But so the question really remains, if we take a look at this most recent rally, we take a look at this corrective wave here, the question that we are looking at in terms of our current model is, are we going to see some sort of an A, a B, and then a final C culminating at a 61% retracement? That would take us to 1280. Or have we seen the lows, that being as of Thursday and Friday last week, when the market found really good support at 1291, 1292 right in here, that being the 50% retracement. And of course, that's a retracement of this rally here. And to me, whether we have seen the low and the market will form a base and begin to trade higher, or if we have one more dip down and we will conclude this corrective wave at a low of 1280, there's a couple of things that would be evident. First of all, even if we hit the low of 1280, that low is a higher low than the previous low. So we hit, would have had 1280, 1240, and then of course 1180, that being our double bottom. That was the very, very large rally began at the end of 2013 culminated beginning of this year we had a series of higher lows that is certainly showing us a marketplace itself that is not only building a base but that has been moving to higher pricing and doing such in a stair step manner so whether we've seen the low and the market is going to begin to track higher from here or we have one more dip down I believe the market will track higher. So in either case, it's kind of a good news, bad news scenario in which the bad news is we might see a little bit more downside. The good news is whether it has culminated or will culminate at the 50% or 61% retracement, my sense right now is that following that, we will go back into an impulse phase and a sizable rally. That rally would most definitely need to take out these highs here at 1341. So as you know, most of the Elliott Wave count that we have been looking at on our daily and intraday work has been really a sub count. The sub count being behind an intermediate wave. And in terms of an intermediate wave count, I've pulled up a weekly chart so you can get more of an idea. When we consider the fact that we came off of the market trading lower and it hits this low back in December last year, right at actually January 1st of this year, in which we had this double bottom at 1180, that would certainly signal the end of a corrective cycle and into a bullish cycle. To maintain the bullish cycle, we've got to have a series of impulse waves, each having higher lows and higher highs. So we'll have to see how that pans out because what we've gotten is we have gotten a wave one. There's no doubt about that. We've gotten a wave two right in here. And my belief is the sub count that we have been looking at right here and here is part and parcel of something like a one, two, three, four, five, a five count, this being all part and parcel of an intermediate wave three. That's really what I'm looking at. Now, what is important if we consider this is the conclusion of this impulse right here. If in fact it is a valid third wave, we will need to really take out this high here which is 1391, just below 1400. Now realize if we're if this was our wave one sub count, two, three doesn't necessarily have to take this out. Corrective four is going to not be able to trade within this particular area for it to still be a valid count. In other words, it can't go into this wave one excuse me, into uh, the area of wave two right here, which would be the top of wave one, which is why I said that. And the culmination or the fifth component of this would by necessity have to take this out for this to be a valid impulse wave and a bullish count. So we'll have to see how this unfolds. As I said, this is more of a long-term view, but just to kind of put everything into perspective, really all we have been focusing on recently is this corrective action here. 
so as far as silver goes, it's completely different and it's not giving us any kind of really dramatically clear signals in terms of any kind of wave count like we are getting in gold. And this is why. Take a look at this. This is where we had our rally, what we call our wave one in gold. Wave two, which was very, very deep, came to almost a 76% retracement. The 61% retracement of that move was 1264, 1232 being the 76% uh, retracement. And the low, I believe that it hit was around 1241. So it came within 76%, but not below. When we take a look at this corrective action, this corrective action can no way have any kind of a clear count because you, in essence, got another double bottom where we got a low at 1240 back in June when the market came down. So we got that higher low. We certainly didn't get that in silver. So we're not getting any kind of a clear cut wave count here because of that. When we look at the longer picture, we have been focusing on the fact that what we have been looking at is this most recent rally in silver has genuinely given us a nice push or rally, and then a 50% correction or retracement from that point. We'll have to see how it all unfolds. This has been Gary Wagner, wishing you as always good trading. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Wednesday for another daily update and review. Bye-bye.